Hi guys, I'm back and today I decided to clarify some butter. Uh, a couple reasons you have clarified butter or also known as ghee. Uh, you just, ghee is really expensive. So if you can do it at home, why not? Uh, you just take regular butter. Most people like to use unsalted. Uh, I've got unsalted here. You can use salted. It's not a huge deal if you have salted, but if you find butter on sale, grab it. Um, so first thing you do, which I've already done in this pot with a nice thick bottom on very low, see it's on the very lowest setting, um, melt your butter. This is two pounds of butter. And it's really simple to do. So I have a jar here and some, this is a nut bag cheesecloth. So once the butter starts to melt, you start getting this foam at the top, which you don't want in your ghee. And I just scoop it away. I've heard a couple things about this foam. Uh, I've heard that it is the whey protein coming to the top, left over in from the milk solids, from the, the butter making process. I have also heard that it is just part of milk solids, but they look slightly different. So you want to keep this on low. I'm just going to turn it up slightly. And if you're going to give it a stir, you don't want to go down to the very bottom because it mixes up those milk solids. Um, and you want them to stick to the bottom of the pan. So this is a low and slow process. This has already been going for oh, a good 15 minutes. And you just want to keep removing the foam. And this will eventually come up to bit of a simmer, but it's going to take a little while longer. So I'm going to pause it here for you guys because you don't need to sit and watch butter cook. And we'll come back when it's at a simmer and um, see what we do then. Okay, so it's been almost 10 minutes and we finally have a simmer going. And you can see there's different colors, like over here and at the edge there. We're getting some really, really clear um, butter fat. And you can see in the bubbles, in these little geysers, how it's lighter yellow and then almost like white little chunks. Those white chunks are the milk solids. Um, and we're just gonna, again, skim off the top foam and it'll help it simmer more. So by cooking it, heating it low and slow, um, we're evaporating any water that's in the butter. Uh, as, as anybody who does any prepping, long-term storage, water moisture is one of the biggest enemies in long-term storage. 
also, not that butter has a lot of water in it, but we want to get out as much of that, but that water as possible. And then we also want to separate the milk solids from the milk fat, the butter fat, and then the milk solids, as well as all this beautiful foam that I've been scooping off. It's really, really good on popcorn. You can still use it. You don't need to throw it out. Um, and I'm also going to do an experiment where I'm going to try and freeze dry the foam and milk solids. Because when we have, when we're done, the ghee is all the fat and freeze drying does not do well with fat. So we're, we're separating those components. So I'm gonna try and freeze dry the non-fat components and we will store the butter fat. It stays soft on your counter in an airtight jar. It can last years just, you know, a basement in a cupboard you don't have to refrigerate it but you can and um, as long as you've gotten all the milk fats out um, yeah so we will just keep going with this until it's done And if you're wondering about this bowl back here, earlier today, I browned up some ground beef to go in the freeze dryer, make some taco meat, but I drain off all of the fat, all the juices, and then I give it a good rinse. Um, so this, I, I let the first straining of it sit in this bowl. And then this, as you can see, I can pull the fat away and I've got all this brown liquid, liquid gold that's so flavorful. So this, this fat, I might use it, find some use for it, or it might just go in the garbage. But the juices from the meat, so good for soups and stews and stock. So I try not to waste anything if I can. Okay, so it's been another few minutes, almost 10 again, and it's really simmering good now. And as I scoop away the, the stuff on the top again, like I keep doing every now and then, you can really see that it's starting to clear. And this is, this is what we want. Super clear and clean butter. So we're almost there. So it's already been almost half an hour. Like I said, this is a slow process. It's not gonna be done in five, 10, 15 minutes. And even though I have two pounds of butter in here, one pound, two pounds, it, it doesn't really make much difference in, in the amount of time it takes. So, you know, throw on a movie. Well, yeah, you sit here and um, strain your butter. Ghee or clarified butter is also really good for cooking and baking. 
um, things like hollandaise sauce. You can do with regular butter, but you really, really, really want to do it with clarified butter. As well, if you want, if you're cooking, say in a frying pan and you want to um, saute up some, some onions or you know, you're cooking anything really. And then get distracted for a minute and next thing you know, your butter's burning. That's the, the milk solids in your butter that's burning. It's not the butter fat. So with this, with ghee clarified butter, you can leave a frying pan on the stove or in the oven or over a campfire walk away and forget about it for half an hour. I don't advise doing that, but your butter won't burn. It has a much, much, much higher smoke point. So you won't get that bitter burnt taste if you accidentally burn your butter. Keep doing the same thing, straining your butter. Okay, so we're almost there. We're getting really close. A lot of people like to just keep letting it sit. Um, so those milk solids stick to the bottom of the pan. Because I like to use the milk solids, I don't want them sticking to the bottom of the pan because they can still burn. So I, I do something that a lot of people say not to do. Once it's starting to get nice and clear like this, I, I, I stir it up and I scrape it up. And with my little, little strainer here, I can scoop up a lot of those milk solids and take them out before they burn. Although they do get a nice, if they start to brown, that's fine. Uh, it gets a nice uh, nutty flavor to it, which is really, really nice. But we are just about done here. You see there, even with um, stirring it up and scraping the bottom of the pan, there is not very much white coming to the surface anymore. So I've got my clean jar here. This jar here, I've just been using it to collect the milk solids, the butter, the, the white foamy stuff because like I said, I'm going to be using that for sure. So we've got a good amount. So I'm going to transfer my little, if I can. Yep. This is just a mug tea infuser. that I'm going to dump out into there. Do one more scrape. Yes. See how you can see almost to the bottom of the pan already? This is lovely. Now I'm just going to turn off my element. Of 
grab a tray just to put it underneath in case I spill this. I quite often spill. And now I'm going to slowly pour off butter. Don't know if you can see that. Look at that nice clear butter dripping down. It's okay if there's a tiny bit of milk solids that get through. I might strain this again. Um, but that is going to be just marvelous. All right, so we're pouring off the last little bit of the butter. And as you can see, we've still got quite a bit of milk solids in the bottom of the pan, but that's fine. I will scrape those out in a moment. And I've got almost a full quart jar of beautiful, still very hot right now, clarified butter. It's a little foggy because it's hot and steamy, but I'm going to let the last of that strain through. And I've got three more pounds to go. So like I said, this milk solids along with whatever's comes from the next three batches. Uh, I check out later for my video on how this does in the freeze dryer. So if there's anything you'd like to see, cooking stuff, Jeep stuff, gardening, I'm starting my garden soon, uh, freeze drying, dehydrating. If you want to see comparisons between freeze drying and dehydrating, like the same things, suggest some things that you want me to try. Um, otherwise, we'll see what other uh, adventures I get up to this summer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Because why not? <laughs>